it starts in the leadership. A lot of times, you know, I had to deal with a lot of things to, to agree with the Holy Spirit saying, you're the problem. And so I had to really, really humble myself to hear what God would say to me before I could ever receive a refreshing. So I wanted to share some things with leaders. You see, leaders are supposed to be mature in many, many different ways. However, there are some things that can take place where sometimes the fire will go out. A leader is one that introduces a concept, introduces a situation, and they move on and lead others into. When they introduce it, they move into it themselves. A lot of leaders in this hour are introducing things and they're not moving into it. So there's a problem here. There's not a proper connection. And the Spirit of God, amen, is desiring to do many great things. If you would hear me, I didn't come to fuss at you. I come to encourage you. I come to reveal some things to you based on what the Holy Spirit is revealing to me so that your ministry can be more effective in this hour. Some things are about to take place. Hope I can get into some of them this week. If I don't, just know this that this is the last year for some things. Between this time next year, 11 months, because I said this last month, 11 months from now, something's going to happen within these 11 months that's going to call for some tremendous faith and leadership. And it's going to last for the next seven years. And of course, I hope that if you're in that position of leadership that you can lead the people uh, through this thing because it's not going to be easy over the next, let's say, six or seven years. There are political, economical, military. There are many different things that are taking place on the horizon. And many times you don't know what's going on and how they relate. Hopefully, we can get full of God's spirit, get equipped with what he wants us to have so that we can lead the people through this thing that's about to take place. Let me clear the air a little bit. I like to clear the air and then get right down to the point. You know as well as I know that my motivation for calling this meeting is not money. You know that. Get this in your spirit that I'm under God's direction. I'm under, and before you leave here, you're going to know that I'm under God's direction. God has directed me to call leaders because leaders are supposed to lead his people. The Bible said, take heed to yourselves and the flock over which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers and feed the flock of God. Much of the flock today are undernourished. They have contracted all types of diseases, parasites, and things of that nature. They have been the prey of every beast of the field. Ezekiel 34 said, go unto the shepherds that feed themselves and not feed the flock. The elders, shepherds, people that are leading God's people have an awesome responsibility. And the responsibility is not only on the shepherds, but it's on the flock as well. So I pray that something happened this week to you. Now, and talk a little bit about perfect timing. Perfect timing. I don't know whether y'all saw the movie The Perfect Stone. What it meant by The Perfect Stone, everything was brought together to make it a perfect stone. A stone where that it would seem like it's impossible to get out of. All the factors were relating together to cause it to be a perfect stone. I'm saying that in the spirit realm tonight, in the spiritual realm at this time in God's economy, perfect timing. Perfect timing for what the Lord wants to do first and foremost among his leaders. Leaders. I'm dealing with leaders. Leaders. If I can separate the leaders from the rest, we can get some things done. Leaders. You see, the conditions, beloved, are ripe for revival for God's people. That's something I want you to start believing, that God wants you to be revived. God wants you to be set free. God wants you to be refreshed. It's not a matter of us pulling on him, trying to 
twist his arm to get blessed. God wants to refresh you tonight more than anything else. That's why this meeting is here. Hopefully tonight you'll sense his presence and you'll hear him speak and God will create some faith in you for what you need. The conditions are right for revival of God's people. But it has to start with leadership first. This is what I want y'all to understand. We call for revival meetings. We bring folks in, say, let's have a revival and all this stuff. And, I mean, it's good. All those meetings are good, but they may not be God because sometimes it's man-made. When God calls for a revival, you're going to see some miraculous things take place. You're going to see miracles. You're going to see some things start happening. You're going to see certain things begin to drop off of your body. That You're going to experience the presence of a new level of faith and cleansing when God calls for a revival. But he calls for the leadership first. For he said, the husband man must be first partaker. And I'll say this, beloved, we have arrived at the last dispensation, or I might say the dispensational move of God for the preparation of the bride. Let me talk about that a little bit. And the rapture. However, there's much work to be done before she's taken out of here. Before God snatched his people out of here, there has to be revival. According to the scripture, according to what the Holy Spirit has inspired and breathed, there will be a revival. And we are at the perfect time for revival. How do we know? Well, in the book of Ecclesiastes 11, it says this, 11 and 1, Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. If the clouds be full of rain, I want you to get that. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. Watch this. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. He that observe the wind shall not sow. He that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. You see, listen, let me share something with you. Something is about to take place in the spiritual realm that is going to change the natural, amen, landscape, amen, on planet earth. Listen to me. He that observe the winds shall not sow. He that observe the clouds shall not reap. Why? Because they observe circumstance. We've got to move into a place where we know that it's the law and principle of God. Now watch this. Here's a principle. Given, it shall be given. Cast, it shall come back. Here's the principle I'm talking about tonight. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. You watch it. Clouds are full for one thing, to empty themselves upon the earth. That's a principle. That's a law. When clouds are full, they get ready to empty themselves. I'll say to you, the clouds tonight are full over God's church and God's people and leaders, and they are ready to empty themselves. Lift your hands to God. Talk to him just for a few minutes. Chadalalabosata. Sike norobosata. These clouds are ready to empty themselves. These clouds are ready to empty themselves. That's why they are full. In the spiritual realm, these clouds are full. They are ready to, to empty. All it takes are, is the leadership to position themselves so that they can receive what the people need. That's why this meeting is here this week. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Let me go on and talk a little bit more about what God is about to do. You see, we must operate on the law and the word of God regardless of the circumstances or situations. Many times we view circumstances, we view the situation, we get frustrated, we get discouraged, we want to quit and give up. Why? Because the circumstances are hard. It seems as though sometimes we get in a place of unbelief and we cannot exercise faith. So the people, amen, contract all kinds of diseases. They're just in church as a rope. No breath of God whatsoever. The only breath is flesh. But I tell you, I want to hear God breathing once more. 
I want to feel and sense the breath of God. Hallelujah. The clouds are full. You can believe it. God's going to work in this place tonight. If you're a leader and if you want revival, the only thing that will keep you from getting it is your pride. The only thing that will keep you from getting it is your pride. Hallelujah. And your stupidity, praise God, not taking advantage of what the Holy Spirit is about to do to prepare you to lead God's people. None of us can do what we need to do for God by ourselves. We got to have a supernatural move. If the clouds be full, they are ready to empty themselves. And I'm here to say that God is ready to give a leader revival so that you can do what you need to do for God's people. Lift your hands and give God the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God touch that heart. Let the fire burn tonight. Thank you. CK, Ramatada. Aren't you tired of mediocrity? Aren't you tired of rote? Aren't you tired of doing the same old thing? Aren't you tired of the weariness? Nothing is changing. All this activity and nothing is changing. Don't you need a change? Don't you want to see something move? That's what I'm talking about. Not by might, not by power, but it's by my spirit, said the Lord. God want to release his spirit. Good God Almighty. Too much flesh is in the church, and the flesh is in leadership. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad these leaders are here tonight. I'm not here to fuss at you. I'm here, praise God, to exhort you. Something is about to take place. God has spoken a word to me. God has given me a word for you tonight. And I know the Lord is ready to move in your, on your behalf. I know God is ready to bring a refreshing to your church. I know God is ready to bring a move in your life. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 God is a good God. Come on. I say God is a good God. God is a merciful God. God is a gracious God. God want to move. God want to give. God is a giving God. God is a forgiving God. God is a God that can empower you tonight. Hallelujah. You'll not be disappointed. Say it, I'll not be disappointed. I'll not, I'll not be disappointed. You come to receive tonight. You come, praise God, to get loose tonight. All you got to do is just, praise God, receive it. All you got to do is believe it and receive it because the clouds are full. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me move on. Let